So in the last episode, I went over adding phoneme markers to a lip-sync clip. In this one, we'll have a look at the other two types of marker, emotions and gestures. To save a bit of time, I've got this clip ready here. Uh, it's just the normal Gettysburg example clip, but with the emotions taken out. I'm just going to drag it down here and turn on the real-time preview, because it'll make it a bit easier to see what's going on when we add emotions. Now you can add emotion markers in the same way you can add phoneme markers, either by right-clicking on the waveform or by clicking the Add Emotion button down here. When you add a new emotion to the timeline, you'll see that it looks uh, a bit different to a phoneme marker. You've got these start and end handles on either side to change the length, this big bar in the middle which you can use to drag the whole thing around, and these handles which appear when you mouse over them for adjusting the blend in and blend out times. So if I set it like this, you can see it blends in at that time and back conceived in liberty. Time. As well as having standalone markers like that, if you add a second one like this and drag it straight into the other one, you can see you can blend straight from one into the other and the amount they overlap will be the blend time. On top of that, emotions also have an intensity value, just like phonemes. You can set that from the marker settings window here. From Lip Sync 1.3 onwards, there's also this new continuous variation system. What it basically is, is a way of adding kind of subtle changes to an emotion. So instead of it holding the same pose all the way through, you can adjust these, so it changes how often it will change, and these change how much it will change. Now you can vary these on every marker individually if you want to get really kind of in detail, but if you want to change the default settings that will be applied to every new marker, you can do that from the Edit menu, and you can change default marker settings here. Phonemes also now have a similar option, which is randomness, uh, although that will only be once per phoneme. It doesn't change over time, like with emotions. The other new feature with emotions in 1.3 is the emotion mixer. Now, while in the past you could add any of these from here, or add new ones to the project settings, and I'll go over that in a minute, you can now also add a mixer here. Now, although it doesn't look like anything yet, if we right click it and click edit mixer, you now get this new window comes up. You can then add as many emotions as you like to this list, clicking the little plus button. So if, I don't know if we wanted a mix of serious and sad, maybe. And then you can click and drag at the end of either of these to change the level. And you can see on the model there what that mix will look like. So, go for something like that. <laughs> From that point, uh, an emotion mixer will just function like any other emotion. It can be... So that's the basics of actually adding emotions to a clip. So what I'm going to do now is just go through and listen to the audio, see what it looks like, and set this up how I think it should look. And I'll speed this up.
Okay, so this is what I've ended up with. I'll just play this through now so you can see it. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. So it's maybe a bit over the top, but I thought I'd demonstrate uh, a few different techniques. So one thing you can do is have two markers next to each other that are actually using the same emotion, but at different intensities, like that. So that lets you add a bit more variation to the animation instead of just the sort of robotic eyebrows moving up and down that you could have before. You can also do things like this, where it goes back to in neutral liberty. before going into the next one. Emotions don't have to blend directly into each other. So I'm pretty happy with that. With the emotions all set up, I can turn off real-time preview and head over to the gestures tab. Not all clips will need gestures, and I don't think this one really does. But as an example, I've downloaded this waving animation from Mixamo. Just put that back there. Now, gestures are just animation clips that are triggered in a certain point in the animation. Just like phonemes and emotions, you can add them from the same place. Now, I haven't actually got any set up in this uh, project, so this will be a good example to show you the project settings window. If I click uh, add or remove gestures here, the project settings window gets opened in the inspector. Now, you can add new emotions from uh, this list up here and change the names and colors of existing ones. You can set the phoneme set in 1.3 or above, which uh, just controls the list of phonemes that are available, and you can add new gestures. So I'll just add a new one here, and I'll call it Wave. OK. Now, going back over to the clip editor, we should now have our new Wave gesture available. And there aren't any settings or anything available for these, so I'll just drag this wherever we want it. Um, and dedicate it to the let's just put it there. So why not? Okay, and I'll save this where it was and close that. Now the actual animation files that are used for gestures are done per character. So to get that to work, I'll need to now head over to the character and go to the Gestures tab. You can see there's a little uh, warning icon next to it, just, just to let you know that the gestures have changed and this will need setting up. So now we've got uh, the wave gesture in the list here. I can drag the animation file over into the little field there and click Begin Setup. Now this is just a quick wizard that will take you through the process of setting up gestures. Now this process works with Unity's Mechanim animation system. So you'll need to have uh, told it over there which animator to use. And then you can either add a new layer, which I recommend, or if you want, you can use an existing one. Maybe if you've already run this process before. And go through step by step. These are just settings for the transitions and things, which, I mean, they're usually okay to be left as they are. And you just press finish. So now, if you go and actually look at the animator, you'll see we've got this new layer with our wave transition and everything set up. Finally, I'll just set it up so that pressing the start talking button there will play our new clip. And we'll be able to see what that looks like. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. So that's basically the whole process of creating a clip. This is also the last tutorial in this sort of basic series. In the next one I'll be covering how to do 2D characters using sprites and the sprite blend system. And then I'll have a look at Cinema Director and a few other third-party assets like that.